Good blessed Wednesday evening, August the 26th, 326 p.m. I'd like to greet all human beings all around the world with a universal greetings of peace and the blessings of God be with you. Doesn't matter what your political, philosophical, personal, nor your religious beliefs may be. Doesn't matter whether you're the richest or the poorest person on the face of this earth. It doesn't matter whether you the proclaimed toughest or the proclaimed weakest person on the face of this earth. It doesn't matter if you're my family, friends, nor my proclaimed enemies. It doesn't matter even whether you like me or dislike me or like anything that I say or do. That's your prerogative. In some cases, you have a first, 14th uh, 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 amendment rights to that. I'm over here in what they call A.D. Simpson uh, Park. This is my bike. It's a, uh, a night rider. Uh, I use this a lot now because right now I have two vehicles, but three drivers now. My two youngest daughters, 16 and 17, uh, they are able to do 90% uh, or 99% of the things that they need, need to do by themselves. So I use this for exercise. But I come to this particular park uh, it's on the other end uh, uh, of town uh, because I'm not barred from it. The, uh, the uh, city haven't barred me from this. It's, it's a lot of area here, wooded area. In some cases, you know me coming up here at nighttime, uh, some people tell me they got a tree with my name on it. You know, that, that'd be the ideal one. I guess they talking about hanging me, but I told them God got a blessing with my name on it. But I come today, y'all, to say I, I thank God and thank all the people, black and white, Spanish, and whatever nationality that been supporting me with my YouTube videos, uh, knowing uh, what I'm doing is fighting for justice and speaking up for the voiceless people not just the hanging of my son. If anybody take time to look back on my YouTube videos, I was making YouTube videos years before my son was found hung and fighting for justice for all type of people, black, white, it didn't make a difference. If they came to me or if I seen it myself, I'll be fighting for it. I even had my two youngest daughters at the age of 15 and 16 do what probably uh, none or, or a small amount of the two plus million NAACP members and presidents and state presidents, local presidents of the NAACP haven't done, had my two daughters join the NAACP because we thought, thought that the NAACP uh, stands for what like it was when Thor, Thorogood Marshall was the president of the NAACP. It used to stand for the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. Uh, today, it has shown me that it's the uh, National Association uh, for some colored people or some people. Or I, but but uh, I, I wanna show y'all something the Charleston Housing Authority uh, Executive Director Paul Page has barred me from the uh, coming on any properties of the Charleston, Missouri Housing Authority. He's the Executive Director for the Charleston, Missouri Housing Authority. And if any of y'all look at my YouTube videos, uh, you know I was uh, banded and barred illegally. Uh, for making a complaint of some uh, about someone in the Charleston, Missouri Housing Authority who happened to be white. Now, I done made complaints about blacks and it was corrected even by the blacks themselves or the Housing Authority. But when I made the complaint about a white family that numerous of blacks have made complaints about, about and nothing was done. So I put it on my YouTube video. 
I went to the maintenance guys. I went to the family of the white people and complained about their children's and their children's company throwing trash in my bushes, uh, coming destroying my bushes, and nothing done. I went to the foreman. The foreman went to the family. Nothing done. The foreman even went to the executive director. The foreman is black. I'm black. The maintenance guys is black. And nothing was done. Even a person put out a petition on this same white guy when he was living down the streets at 719 uh, Bang Street before his house was caught on fire uh, back in November of 2021, which they moved him next door to me then uh, he's on the corner of Wall Housing in Vine Street. But anyway, I made a complaint, several complaints, made YouTube videos, nothing done. And then when I sent a complaint on one day, I'll just say on the 8th of a certain month, March uh, the 8th, of 2021 uh, on March the 9th, Paul Page uh, typed up a letter that said I was barred and, and banded from the Charleston, all of the Charleston, Missouri Housing Authority property uh, because of my ranting and raving and uh, frightening, frightening uh, the House Charleston, Missouri Housing Authority employees in the residence and trespassing on this white individual's yard, which is yard. My house is the last house on Vine Street uh, that separate the projects on my side of the street. But he said I was trespassing. All I was merely doing is getting the trash that these white people was leaving that kept on going in my bushes and putting it right back in their yard, and he called that trespassing. But when they tear up my bushes, throw trash in my bushes, it's nothing done. Paul Page even had a Charleston, Missouri, uh, rejected e uh, East Prairie, Missouri, chief of police, who's a police officer here in Charleston, Missouri now, because uh, East Prairie, which is re predominantly white, rejected him. Matter of fact, his uh, dispatcher ran against him and became from dispatcher to chief and the chief came back down here to Charleston, Missouri being a police officer where he originally came from and uh, had him to deliver a letter that was illegal to me saying I was barred from the uh, housing authority properties. But now I found with the Human Rights Commission I want to let the the people that the uh, employees of the Charleston, Missouri Housing Authority, those that said that they're afraid of me, I can't see no reason you're afraid of me when they got all these individuals, black and white, that's on 15 years probation, that's still living in the uh, Charleston, Missouri Housing Projects, but they out here shooting up the black community. Some of them recently, uh, uh, abandoned them recently on March the 28th, 2022, came from that white individual's house that uh, the, the executive director barred me from the properties for complaining about and videoing and sending it to HUD in, in St. Louis, Missouri. They came to my houses on video, YouTube video. Thousands of people unwatched it. Thousands of people said it was something wrong with it. But the Charleston, Missouri Housing Authority executive director don't see nothing wrong with it. They came trying to attack me in my two 16 and I mean, then 15 and 16 year old daughters. The police never came. The sheriff never came. The state highway patrol never came. No law enforcement never came. But the community came together and back them Negroes and them white folks back away from me and my two daughters and our property. Now, I sent and I called the sheriff department, 
the Mississippi County Sheriff Department, I even told the sheriff himself, Brent, Britton Farrell, I told the, uh, he's the Mississippi County Sheriff here in Charleston, Missouri, I told the chief of police or the door, Director of the Police Department and Fire Department, Robert Hearns, I told him. I called the Probation and Parole Office in Sykes in Missouri. I sent it to some of the State Highway Patrol. These was felons trying to attack us now. Felons that's on 15 year probation and none of them did nothing about it. These same individuals into, was into shootings where a murder happened and one of the individuals on 15 year paper get out and put the murder on somebody else and then he got shot during this particular shooting where a murder happened, shot in the foot and said he shot himself in the foot but yet they let him back out again y'all and guess what, right down on Vine Street from my house he be pulling up, living in them projects over there, but that's legal for them. And then you see on the housing authority property, individuals that, and I'm not talking about all individuals that been to the pen, but you see some of the ones that continues to do uh, chaos in the black community, they able to stay there. They able to be on the property, but I can't. But then the NAACP, they have meetings in a historical uh, school that used to be the only place blacks can go to school called Lincoln School, y'all. It's called the C.F. Bowen Center now. C.F. Bowen was the president or the uh, principal of the Lincoln School when the white folks didn't allow blacks to go to the other schools like the Charleston Consolidated School Number 7, which is the Charleston R1 School District now. But all of these blacks, this NAACP that's working in the Howell Authority right next to, to that building, all these black individuals that's, that's business people here in Charleston, Missouri, uh, black business people, you see what I'm saying? That's NAACP members. Ain't none of them stood up with me and my two daughters to see why this man illegally abandoned me. See, I can't go to the meetings that the NAACP have in the uh, CF Bowen Center because that's one of the properties that the Housing Authority Executive Director Paul Page has authority over. I can't even walk on the sidewalks. I got to ride my bike in the streets or walk in the streets where the projects is at or where the CF Bowen Center is at. I can't go there where brothers and sisters hang out up under a hut that the city used to have. I can't go up under that. But any felon that you can go blow a black a person's head off and you will be able to hang out in there. You see what I'm saying? Those that tried to attack me, even one of the white women came beating on my door. That was trespassing. And went right back to that white guy house that I've been complaining about that other blacks been complaining about. All you got to do is look. The exterminators even complain about how filthy their house is in the inside. If it's filthy in the inside, you know how it is in the outside. But I'm saying all this to say, before you join the NAACP, especially in Carbondale, Illinois, or Charleston, Missouri, you take a look and see who, who's in there. You see, I witnessed when I went to a meeting downtown well, a young brother and young sister trying to get their, uh, buy, uh, buy, they done bought land to try to get their business up. Here's a black individual that's an NAACP member. Was the only one talking up against him. But she didn't prevail. The white folks voted for the young brother and the brown sister. They didn't see the complaint that the black female NAACP member had concerning them. She tried to like throw a curveball, but a curveball went up in the air. You see what I'm saying? And she was out. Wasn't no foul ball, she was out. But I'm gonna leave y'all with this here. Anybody that's white, black, or any other color, if somebody tell y'all something about Raymond Lewis Ivy, come talk to me first. You see, they'll tell you a lot of things about me. But let me tell you something about me. One thing about me, the two times that I was illegally arrested for two misdemeanors in this town, Charles, Missouri, Mississippi County. One of them was one of the black leaders here. That's NAACP, got a black business. Don't none of them really do nothing for the black community. 
and the white chief of police, Robert Hearns. You only really need a chief of police because he's living off his family name. Some of y'all know that. But let me tell y'all this here. Them the only time that I got convicted because I was fighting up against the odds. But God allowed it to happen for a reason to show you people what type of people you have in this town. Now you take inventory and go ask some of these black business people, what are they doing for the West Side black community? You see what I'm saying? These white organization and these black leaders, they build up stuff in the black community, make millions of dollars, but don't do a doggone thing for the black community. A female came to me for help concerning her daughter. And why do they have to come to me? You know why they have to come to me? Because these individuals that you see on the news that be having all these people from the Gibson Center and all these other places talking about they prevention people, they they come to try to help people. It's all, it's all a joke. It, it, it's all a show. It's all political. But they talk about Raymond Lewis Ivey. But Raymond Lewis Ivey did more good for Charleston, Missouri, Mississippi County in the 26 years that I've been down here than any of these black and white leaders law enforcement put together have done. And I did it all for no money. God pays me off. You see what I'm saying? Peace be still.